red but let's address the red button first you know crofty we get it there's a red button on the sky remote <laughs> now shut the fuck up please <laughs> genuinely man genuinely if, if if you would have said that red button thing one more time i would have personally flown to wherever he's sitting and slapped him across his face like shut the fuck up please <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the last race in the Americas, um, the Brazilian Grand Prix, or what now is the Sao Paulo Grand Prix. You are listening to F1 Fan Fiction, a show about F1 races, brought to you by two F1 fans uh, for the F1 community. We are your hosts. I am Akash, and I'm Saran. And let's get into it. What a race weekend! At least for Mercedes, <laughs> going yeah. up and down like the sinusoidal wave. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a brilliant weekend. They had, I think, like a uh, pretty much a uh, you know Bollywood blockbuster. Kind of, <laughs> like, <laughs> That's true. That's true. It was. I don't know what was going on with them. Um, some rule breaking going on <laughs> some penalties yeah, but finally we saw some um, so return of hamburg bot uh, yes that's right finally i think while. yeah yeah i thought yeah right like it, it took a while i think hamilton on the podium itself i think it's been a while it feels like it's been a while uh and neto is just dominant i mean i thought we I, we were like transported back to last year <laughs> that's that's what yeah. it was like yeah yeah much. yeah Right? This weekend was like that. You're right. You're right. It was the return of 2020 Hamilton, right? Suddenly. Yeah, complete, complete Hamilton. <laughs> complete no, but dominance. superb driving yesterday. I feel like superb driving. Whatever uh, was uh, given to them as penalties, we'll come to that later in the episode. Mm-hmm. It was all because of their doing. It was not <laughs> so. Yeah, people did walk over them or something like that. But irrespective of all of that, getting a pole. Yep. Uh, dropping down to, to P20, yeah. um, getting to P5, yep. dropping down to P10, and from there, winning. Each, it, it goes to show that you are a seven-time world yeah. champion for some exactly. people, right? But yeah, brilliant masterclass from Hamilton. Exactly. I mean, wow, he was just flying. Like, it was weird, like, ever since after, like, in qualifying, right? Like, first of all, in the... like the real qualifying for the sprint race yeah, i i it's so confusing anyways for <laughs> qualifying itself he was super fast the sprint race as we saw he just like you know, cut through the field and there was a point where he was just overtaking one person per lap and at the exact same yeah, point yeah, which was the start yeah. finish line it was <laughs> it was weird it felt like you know people are just like editing the video and just switching <laughs> the drivers there <laughs> it was insane his speed was insane he was not making any mistakes he was on like some super focus mode yeah he i think is clawing back he, it felt like the championship was like you know going away from his hands but it's kind of now that you know he's like hey i'm back you know i'm not going to let you win so easily <laughs> but um, i think the interesting part about interlagos is you have straight two straights back to back So you mm-hmm. get a DRS, yep. and as soon as you finish your DRS on the main straight, you are in the DRS detection point, which you more or less end up get getting because you're using the strip stream and mm-hmm. the on the main straight. So you get a DRS on the back straight again. Yep. I think I think yeah, that's the beauty of this track, and you do end up seeing yep. quite a lot of overtakes and uh, some interesting racing yeah. overall. So yeah, just just brilliant track and amazing fighting overall as well. but still credit to max right like i mean uh, he was in a far worse car like genuinely mercedes was on some other level at like they were leagues apart honestly both the cars on the track but uh, max did a brilliant job with you know defending with whatever he could uh, like the only place where he had a little edge was in sector 2 because yeah. of the twisty bits yeah. uh, where red bull was a little faster than the mercedes but Uh, he used that to his advantage he was positioning his car so well to defend i mean at points yeah he did do a couple dirty moves like uh, i mean i wouldn't say exactly dirty but you know that's 
yeah. that's the limit at which where they are right now but yeah one of them was definitely dirty which was the weaving on the street that was yeah not in the best but to be, thing to, to be honest i think he knew yeah, he that was happening knew. as soon as his engineers told yeah. him about the black and black and white flag he was yeah. he was like oh perfect say hi yeah. so i think he, he exactly knew what he was yeah doing. he kind of knew about it and just you know went for it yeah i think he knew. so i think at some point he definitely knew like whatever he does hamilton is going to fly past uh it was uh, like obviously a little bit of desperation as well from his end uh but yeah at at the end i think he just didn't have any choice i mean you you know there's a saying that you can't defend top speed right like you just can't <laughs> um speaking about mercedes um boat as being asked to sit roll stay handshake it went <laughs> perfectly fine yesterday i for one thought he was probably just going to retire his car at that point the way he slowed yeah. down his car to let hamilton pass <laughs> yeah. when they showed it first of all you know i i remember like when we were watching like yeah he was cutting through the field obviously uh but then he like overtook uh signs and leclerc and i thought yeah okay it might take him at least like you know some time to overtake bottas like maybe a lap or two but then suddenly like they showed on the camera that hamilton is ahead like wait what when did that happen <laughs> and then like suddenly off camera like again they they show them you know switching positions and bottas pretty much basically just breaks entirely till hamilton overtakes him uh, that was a bit yeah but i think uh, overall uh, <laughs> he did uh, drive well i think mercedes is is anyway strong at mm-hmm. interlogos uh, in general if you think about it like every year they've come here at least hamilton has had a brilliant um, not luck but like a race here be it from 2008 with glock or just snatching mm-hmm. that championship from massa to to yesterday where overall he just dominated the race and boat has dominate uh, following suit with him and be team orders or what not it was just mm-hmm. just uh, brilliant to see mercedes though i i'm not sure putas would had entered a p3 if it was not for some luck on his end as well for change uh, basically if you remember when he went to pit that's exactly i mean he got a virtual safety car to pit right and uh, as soon as he was getting out the virtual safety car like ended and he could you know get on to racing speed instantly so if not for that uh, i guess perez would at least maybe there for the contention of p3 uh, he maybe at the end he might not be able to defend that position but i guess perez would be up there but uh, butas yeah otherwise he did uh, drive well but but i think that that was a little unlucky on perez's end that uh, butas got that advantage I mean yesterday it it uh, happened a couple of times where it uh, did work in favor of Mercedes too um mm-hmm. with quite a bit with the virtual safety car the safety car itself coming mm-hmm. out so so you know that gap that does end up building with 40% or what not uh, the the delta reduction mm-hmm. does end up happening and gives uh, benefit to the driver so there was some serendipity at the end with mercedes and bottas for sure yep, for yep, sure yep. yeah though i think uh, it was pretty much mercedes's weekend in yeah, terms yeah, of performance yeah. i mean they also had some uh, other weirdness going around with them uh, like especially toto i don't know what's wrong oh, with that man. guy he's just oh, a man. fucking I'm prick now i think i'm going to beat myself <laughs> while saying these things but i but i hate that team dude come on you know what this is this is this is where i flipped this is this is where my emotions flipped you know i was if we were doing this live you know the audience who would listening to us would have been like he's so happy for mercedes for a change although he despises hamilton and what not but now that i'm recording this and having seen how they've celebrated they've celebrate as if the the whole world spotted against them and they want to take anything away from their hard earned riches and and i don't understand why they behave this way <laughs> like to to removing his mask and the meme that's become of him with the pointing finger aggressiveness sure adrenaline but sorry sorry one one quick thing 
Tutu wasn't wearing a mask at all yesterday. Just, no, no, just so wanted to point that out. It, true, true. <laughs> but he did wear it for one second just to remove <laughs> it in front of the cameras while hamilton was getting on the pole and so and, good. and that just pisses me off man that just pisses <laughs> me off man how many rules do you need to flaunt yeah. that's one that's one hamilton himself like there's a reason why i i start despising this guy is how he celebrates i mean sure you have the right to celebrate but him correcting his engineers on the radio saying not 20 position penalty but like 25 yep and even if it was 30 <laughs> all of it was your doing you messing up with your mm-hmm. rear wheel mm-hmm. you taking the engine change is not something that was forced upon you where because someone hit you it mm-hmm. was something that you did was warranted a great place penalty so rather than being cocking and condescending about it um come on sure and that's where i flip that's where i flip <laughs> all my love for was going to come back for hamilton and mercedes this weekend and yeah and the the respect that was mm-hmm. going to come because of the 25 place fight it's it's just gonna <laughs> it's just gone away beep i do kind of agree you know the whole celebration the whole the whole message from toto about uh, you know yesterday especially i think in the sprint race you know fuck them all yeah i mean uh dude like you guys broke some rules like and think about aston martin right vettel second position god you know he got disqualified from it for yeah. not having 0.3 liters of fuel at the end and that too was kind of proven that there was some a uh, damage on the car which had caused it and the same thing happened with these guys as well yeah. right like yeah. uh yeah agreed like you had some damage but rules are rules like you broke some technical regulation so you are going to you know get those penalties like people are not you know it's it's weird they were posing as if you know like uh like other teams did them dirty or you know there were some dirty tricks going around or something you know what i'm sorry but you know what this reminds me of there's this meme of three image thing where the first one's a guy riding a bicycle the second one he's he poking a stick into his front wheel <laughs> and then he falls this is exactly yes. that scenario that second image is them messing with their car to break yeah. rules and stuff and then the third one is them complaining they are giving us penalty so like dude you are doing this to yourself come on you know what do you know what do i'm glad they did that because otherwise we would have a very shitty boring race that's true. that's true. <laughs> it would basically be just hamilton doing laps around <laughs> <laughs> yeah I like think us. at that point he would have still fought uh, what happened but just yep. to laugh <laughs> Yeah 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 that's true. I I agree they did have a better car this weekend so um but the the interesting part is both Christian Horner and Max and I'm pretty sure more mm-hmm. folks in the garage too sort of uh, anticipated this mm-hmm. this uh, type of Mercedes uh, d- dominance and it's interesting cuz there are these uh, news articles um i think i think there is a brilliant one by us.motorsport.com where they are they are showing how red bull is going to protest the uh, flexi wing uh, that that merk has so there's going to be something coming up on there i don't know mm-hmm. too many details i think we'll we'll only have to wait and see what red bull will end up doing but uh, another interesting thing that's that's popped up on the internet is uh return of das the driver assistive system <laughs> that was yeah. banned um <laughs> last year because there's there's a there's a footage of uh hamilton going up the main straight after the last corner just tag bit pulling his steering wheel mm-hmm. uh, something similar to das so I, my question at this point is is Mercedes trying to do everything in their power to you know flaunt <laughs> break whatever you want to call it just mm-hmm. just be as much as out there that they can to get that P1 position yeah 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 it's it's weird like that i did see that video uh, it's it does look like das i don't know i mean i guess they must not be doing that because yeah. if i would definitely find it out but yeah it, it did feel like it i don't know uh, maybe we'll, we'll have to look a little bit more yeah there is exactly there's there's not yeah. much authenticated proof there it's just someone's video so mm-hmm. yeah there will have to be much more investigation done there and yeah 
but something fishy is going around you know with the flexi wing as well what red bull is kind of planning to protest but at this point uh, they have also been saying that you know it's so late into the season that even if they protest right now it's highly unlikely that you know any result would come out before the end of the season so like it won't really help anybody uh, so they are kind of unsure about whether they should protest or not but yeah let's see how it goes but if this is what the performance delta is going to be here on and saudi arabia dude it's just a fucking straight that's all yeah it's it's <laughs> daytona uh, drunk track yep <laughs> <laughs> so i i can't even imagine at that point i think hamilton will be just like a you know like a blur around the track <laughs> i can totally i i'm totally getting the road run and wily coyote vibes <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was it wasn't it wasn't a bad weekend from red bull themselves either i think uh-huh. like um i would have i would have loved to see perez like extract more from the car but uh, even beyond that i think like he 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 did the best he mm. could um yep, i loved yep. him snatching that extra point and oh, not yeah, and not for awesome sorry. yeah yeah, <laughs> so yeah that was exactly. really awesome yeah <laughs> and we had to wait we had to wait almost like half a race uh, half a race length uh, sorry not a race length but half a lap length to see mm-hmm. perez cross that finish line to see if he snatched <laughs> the the purple uh, yeah. flag but I, I i liked it not for the point taken away from hamilton towards max mm-hmm. but i like mm-hmm. the point going to red bull cuz they are also yep. inching close towards that constructor championship right so yep. for yep. me it was more of that than you know yeah. giving it to max yeah definitely i think and i think for them it was like a uh, you know two birds one stone kind of a thing so yeah. worked out perfectly uh perfect decision i mean he had a uh, pit stop worth of gap behind so and again you know that th- there was the class apart right like mercedes and red bull were in their own class uh nobody else was even close by so yeah i think definitely not a bad weekend for red bull <laughs> yep, yep 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 um overall i think i also liked the calmness and professionalism that max showed um mm-hmm. in his celebrations for sure i mean he's he's not one so he's he's not uh, gonna be over the top as well right. but even beyond that i mean acknowledging both him and horner to like acknowledging how well hamilton has uh, driven around the track yesterday um, and all through the weekend uh, mm-hmm. just shows mm-hmm. some some good professionalism versus uh, not being able to control your uh, adrenaline <laughs> Uh, fuck them all oh, man. <laughs> um, but overall yeah, yeah red bull red bull uh, it does i mean i i don't particularly like horner as well cuz he's he yeah, self is yeah. too he's coffee. a shit man yeah. exactly <laughs> but, but then he takes up these fights with fia bring some more entertainment yeah. and then ends up also being some, <laughs> some word of professional uh, around mm-hmm. the 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 pit garage sun like yeah. you, you got a yeah. free pass <laughs> yeah no yeah it was uh, max definitely you know i every race i watch him i become you know i like him more uh, for the very fact that uh, how calm he is it's weird right it, it doesn't feel like he's in a championship at all like <laughs> very honestly like hamilton does look like he is in a championship he is stressed he is you know he's fierce he is angry like it it's very evident that is there but it, on the other hand this guy it seems like you know he's just like coming for a race like just logging in from his home for a sim race or something like that <laughs> yeah right probably probably toto's better his house against hamilton like if i don't give you the race championship title my house is uh-huh. yours sort of thing <laughs> you own my life or something like that that just makes them so pumped up every time they're inching close towards the championship title <laughs> yeah <laughs> well not the championship title but i think there's a title that two other teams are fighting for <laughs> that's the position 3 oh, yeah that battle, that battle is very interesting at this point man 
it's 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 being undervalued but uh, mclaren and ferrari are going at it mm-hmm. and actually yeah that's that's something that should get more media traction and race traction as well there's something brilliant happening at p3 yeah 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 and suddenly it seems like it's just slipping away from mclaren right like uh they're so far behind like it's weird like ricardo i w- why did he retire by the so way there was I, some, i really missed that no so there was some some issue with uh, with the power unit i think they have this mclaren uh, the mercedes engine mercedes. at this point mm-hmm. and there was some problem with the power unit uh, that they had, had to retire the car but uh, mm-hmm. nothing otherwise okay either way is like uh, not a great weekend lando finishing 10th is you know lando is just gone off the rails it seems like even at the start it was an unnecessary risk that he took like once you go out on the green area you know the other driver is not obliged to give space that's what i felt <laughs> no true 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 he's not obliged mm-hmm. to but i felt like science did try to squeeze him on the right <laughs> um sure it was still them racing so i, I don't mm-hmm. i don't really have an opinion one way or another uh, but uh, overall it was fun to see see them yep. go at it i yep, would have yep. loved to not see a puncture at that point um, mm-hmm. but still yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. No so I feel like it was a unnecessary risk I like Lando should had been more mature about it in the sense that uh I agree that he has not had a good result in a while and he probably wanted to get that opportunistic overtake in the lap 1 yeah but yeah that that's where you know kind of his rookiness probably yeah. still kind of shows uh yeah i think he you're right i think he could have gotten that slip stream on the back straight and then probably uh, turn on the turn the, the left turn or the the u turn right he could have taken signs out if he had that pace which it seemed like he had at least from the restart mm-hmm. uh but well it, not a bad drive from him too like coming p10 yep. from p20 after like a mm-hmm. very big mm-hmm. delta so still some kudos there i think what's yeah. what's interesting for us at this podcast is McLaren versus Ferrari has become a repeating segment for us on this show and and it goes to show too because like Ferrari has extended their lead from McLaren by just 31.5 points mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. which could have been less if Ricardo was still there so it's still anybody's game I feel um if Ricardo can pull this along with the Lando up there um uh, this is going to get very tight for me and I'm excited for it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm really hoping that McLaren like, you know, uh just get their shit together, honestly speaking. Like it's it seems like they've just gone haywire. Yeah. Uh the formula that was just working so well uh has just, you know, fallen apart is what feels like. It's very weird. Um something definitely is going wrong. They need to figure it out and you know just get their head into the game, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um let's take a moment here for some mid uh, episode comments uh folks for those of you who've been listening to us episode after episode thank you so much if you are already subscribed thank you again so much if you are not uh no worries i mean listen to us follow for us for a few uh, ep- more episodes see if you like us i'm sure you will and then subscribe whenever you want uh do share this with your friends cuz uh, this is again like a, a, a completely unplugged um uh, pure brain dump of thoughts that we have on the weekend um follow us on our socials you can find us anywhere at at the rate f1 fan fiction the same handle works on any platform um yeah write to us what you are liking what you are not uh contact us at the rate f1 fan fiction is our email um you know us i am akash the other voice is sarang so yeah write to us what do you like what do you don't um starting next season we may introduce a new segment where we read fan mails and fan uh, posts and comments so uh if you want to be featured if you want to get a shout out drop in those messages to us um by the way for some of those folks who were waiting for a live session on this uh, on this grand prix as well there is something special coming out cuz we did have a third host yesterday before the race so uh, stay tuned for something coming out and someone else's interview also coming in 
um yeah let's let's get it back on to the to uh, to the episode now so sarang uh huh <laughs> thoughts on british commentary from yesterday man uh, oh man okay red but let's address the red button first you know crofty we get it there's a red button on the sky remote <laughs> oh, shut the fuck up please <laughs> genuinely man genuinely if, if if you would have said that red button thing one more time i would have personally flown to wherever he's sitting and slapped him across his face like shut the fuck up please <laughs> <laughs> yeah man i mean yeah i get it you are pipping out you know sky but you know just chill a little please uh it's getting a bit annoying race after race and today it was just weird like it was i I really want to go back and count the number of times he said that. I think it must be yeah, you know, in the tens, twenties, thirties. I don't know. I've lost count. The maximum amount of time he said it in a particular race, for sure, to a yep. point where it got annoying. Um, also, I, I, I sort of get his enthusiasm for being a Brit, supporting a Brit. Sure, by all means, right? But. somewhere down the line i mean you got to draw a line realizing you're a commentator for the sport and not for hamilton only yeah um because there, there was a visible change and shift in energy in the commentary before and after hamilton led the race and i'm like come on that's somewhat not done <laughs> yeah i honestly uh i completely missed this and i'm happy about it because i after listening to his red button bullshit for so long <laughs> i just switched to the pit lane channel so that i didn't have to listen to him anymore <laughs> lucky you man i don't have f1 tv here so i still got to listen to his voice yeah but no i'm pretty sure i i did like catch some parts of it i mean i was switching between them hmm. but yeah i totally agree that you know it was weird he was so fixated on the whole uh the you know pushing out oh, hamilton on the track a, out of the track i mean yes i do agree it was a little naughty from max i would yeah. say i mean but it was you know it's wheel to wheel battle uh they are going at it at you know just at the limit of their cars uh fia pretty much said that there's no investigation necessary because they do have access to a lot of data that we or even the commentators don't have right which is basically the steering input and everything right and uh, yeah if they determine that there was no investigation necessary i mean it's pretty evident that i don't know what the big deal was with crofty constantly bringing that up i mean just because he didn't get to see if if max did a, a right hand move on his steering wheel he was <laughs> yeah. just so adamant that he should get a penalty he should get a penalty <laughs> oh man um yeah i mean it it was it was quite unwarranted for uh, even uh, horner and uh, i forget who was from the mercedes garage speaking with massey at that point oh first of all i don't i don't understand why people speak with massey he has no <laughs> say in making a decision he's exactly why is massey being brought into It this conversation makes no sense at all he is just the race director he exactly. is not a steward we <laughs> don't get it they just ring massey up for no reason all the time as if he's the, he's the one making these decisions or coming penalty anyway. dude i think i think it's just uh you know like uh, they just want a space for venting out their frustration so they just call him up <laughs> and probably is a you know just a good listener so he's like yeah i'll listen <laughs> but he does feel like that you know that the calmness in his voice is so soothing i'm like okay yeah, sure i'll i'll believe what you say masi <laughs> that voice totally feels like you know uh for the voice of a kindergarten teacher because that's exactly what he is doing you know handling a bunch of kids there because everybody is just complaining you know that you know, it's like he took my pencil you know it's pretty much pretty much just that level of complaining that they are doing yep 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 days. yep um but yeah man i think i think there should be some rules coming into commentary box to i'm just joking but uh, Massey was no so uh, Crofty and Brundle were a bit annoying yesterday. Um, anywho, still benefit of doubt to them. Um, being Brit, they want to support a Brit driver, sure. Uh, 
what else was happening yesterday there were we 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 spent quite a lot of minutes on this episode talking about uh, these these four teams but uh, there was there's quite a lot happening um, in the trailing end and then with all the other teams and drivers as well right yeah 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 i think uh, another team that's like gotten a decent result today is alpine which was kind of mm-hmm. unexpected honestly yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah yeah it like in qualification sprint race they didn't seem like they had a lot of pace mm-hmm. but 8th and 9th wow not yeah. a bad day at all yeah ocon and, and alonso both lifting the teams up i mean more so alonso it felt like it was it, it did feel like <laughs> brazil and ocon don't go hand in hand cuz he was <laughs> he was going to have yeah. this the same spot where yep. uh, which caused uh, max to push he's going to knock off gasly i think right <laughs> yeah the, it, it was that same corner that same turn um, he was going to have it that incident. really felt like you know his life flashed in front of his eyes <laughs> because the way he suddenly like turned his <laughs> turned his steering to the right i think he suddenly like you know paused mid second he remembered max pushing him and everything yeah max and his face up flashing in front of him exactly <laughs> Uh, like <laughs> but yeah i mean both both alonso and uh, ocon having brilliant yeah. lifting their team up it's interesting to see it too right like uh, if if you take a look at the constructor championship both alpine and aston martin are tied at 112 points at this this moment so there's there's yeah. a good battle happening for that uh, position down there as well so it's going to be interesting uh, who leads more Stroll was not having a good day and I don't have much hopes from him. <laughs> <As usual. laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah the veterans trying to fight for their yeah. constructor Vettel versus Alonso it's going to be fun. Yeah yeah yeah. Vettel especially I mean uh, it seems like he has a renewed energy suddenly right like especially in the second half of the season mainly I think like uh obviously i think he got two p2s this season wow he's been having a great season honestly yeah. speaking yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean yeah one of his one of it was taken away because of disqualification but honestly speaking uh, it was his win i i mean his second position still i would say yeah. uh, he doesn't get the points for it fair enough but yeah p2 is p2 uh, but yeah my point being that vettel is just doing great and lance as we had just talked last time as well i don't know what's going on today was just bad luck i guess but uh, yeah still it didn't seem like he was on a lot of pace it, yeah it just felt like he was there somewhere uh, but that overtake or uh, by vettel and mm. alonso over yuki was <laughs> so much fun <laughs> veterans veterans bullying a rookie there yep <laughs> <laughs> yuki being yuki i think his his brain would have cursed and abused quite a lot when both overtook him uh <laughs> but it was fun to see both of these guys uh, take <laughs> up on Yuki that way. Yeah. Yuki was having a very weird day. Uh I mean he he first of all got that penalty. Uh I mean what was his mistake? He, I don't know why, why did he dive bomb there? Uh but did he, he did. lock up or did he lock up? I don't know if it was it was just a mistake mistake or was it like a driving thing that he just couldn't control. I don't know what yeah. happened there with him. Yeah, me neither. I, I haven't like taken a look properly later on, but uh, either way is like you know, ten second penalty itself like put him at a you know large disadvantage. His front wing was damaged as well, uh, yeah. and yeah, and then he was just like you know <laughs> overtaken by Alonso and Vettel in one shot. <laughs> Not <laughs> yeah, a good game for him. Yeah, that means getting yep. lap, getting overtaken by both. But it's interesting. Okay, now now I'm finally starting to get. F1 race FIA race control cuz bringing out a safety car uh, is mm-hmm. is uh, and and damaging your front wing is uh, equally penalized as causing a red flag and a 51g crash i okay now now i get it now now no, that's it's it's even more dude this was 10 second penalty he had got in a 5 second penalty oh is it oh okay yep. all right so this is way worse cuz this could kill someone sure <laughs> Yeah, ten second penalty. I felt was too harsh. Like even if I don't know, like yeah, he he shouldn't have done that. But ten seconds is a bit too harsh. I don't know. Like uh, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Uh, either ways, 
it's quite weird i guess <laughs> now that i think about it honestly right. uh, i at that point i thought that you know it's fine like it was his mistake but yeah it, probably 5 seconds would have been a much fairer uh, penalty i guess all of all of this is you know all of these discussions are coming up um every every time are coming up whenever there's been this 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 sprint race i for uh-huh. one honestly don't like sprint races cuz it just is yeah. the race fun but i don't know what what are Completely. your thoughts on that sir yeah no i mean it's not it's not helping the way that you know liberty media thinks it would help yeah uh, they were expecting much crazier races because of the short format but that's not true people are being more careful in these races and most drivers have said this that they drive more carefully in these races because they, this race doesn't turn any points like just three to one points is nothing and that is just for the top 3 yeah. so you know there isn't just n- enough incentive for these uh, drivers to risk things right so yeah the sprint format at least in the way that we have it right now doesn't make any sense uh yeah maybe also, what do you think uh, what are your thoughts on uh, as i was having this conversation with a friend of mine mm-hmm. um but what are your thoughts on the fastest lap point i mean it was something at least for me in the first half of the season but mm-hmm. what are your thoughts on it now i i do definitely like it 21 points there are 21 re- or so races right so 21 points to be earned through the season is is definitely a big factor in terms of strategy and we see that every race like you know teams going for that fastest lap uh, it's just another point of you know strategy i would say which is which just makes the whole thing more exciting right like uh having this another mechanism for the teams to earn points as such because this is after all a team sport right and uh, like things like sacrificing a bit for your teammate is a part of it and that's what like happened for perez i mean he didn't lucky lose a position but uh, yeah they probably might had still made him do it even if it probably costed a position but i guess that's a awesome way of uh, you know keeping things interesting and i think uh, it's working definitely right right i at some level do think that it's being miss and eh, not misuse not the right word but it's mm-hmm. sort of becoming a joke. overused kind of yeah yeah yeah, yeah. cuz it's like your driver number 2 is is asked to sort <laughs> of sacrifice yeah. yeah exactly right so yeah. i think True. i probably at least for me the thought was this this is going to be an incentive for the race leader uh right. but now as as you're pointing it out which is which is what's happening it's it's become yeah. like a strategy point and somewhere rightfully so right like at this point where the championships got in this close every point matters for both mm-hmm. driver championship and constructor championship so mm-hmm. sure it's being used in the right way um and maybe this is what it was intended for so i'm i'm the odd one out in this whole situation uh, but in my head as like this was more for an incentive to the the right. leading driver which which is somewhere is is, is what's not happening You know I think this is the perfect example of probably uh expectation versus reality in the sense that <laughs> I'm pretty yes. sure the expectation of FIA was that it would uh, you know an advantage the forward front you know the f- leaders of the race yes. basically to uh, go for the fastest lap but yeah it's f1 this is what always happens yeah. they find loopholes they you know find those small tiny gaps in those laws to you know just skirt by uh, and that's what every team does pretty much yeah. like you know ferrari has done it red bull has yeah, done yeah, it yeah. mercedes has done it everybody does it it's part of the game so you know yeah well um, yeah whatever you introduce they are going to find some weird things and so so switching gears man this mm-hmm. episode let's let's talk a bit about haas as well uh, yeah i want to start off with mick where uh, pre race there was this interesting banter between mick and kimi where nick uh, mick sorry mick was asked mm-hmm. um how does he feel fighting against uh, kimi there was a silence and then uh, he says well i don't get much chance to to race against kimi to which kimi was like i can slow down for you and then you, then then you can race me Cut to, uh, yes. cut to the race where they they almost touch each other. 
exactly yeah it was so weird that comment was first of all the whole whole interview was really awesome uh you know if you go and go back and listen if you guys haven't you should please go and check it out but anyways uh, i i do agree that it was just yeah so good in that sense that they did actually touch <laughs> they did actually have to raise uh but i think overall has uh man i i feel for them man uh i feel for the team the entire team honestly speaking they have been through a lot of shit in the sense that last year with the whole rich energy debacle i mean think about all the all the people who put in hours of their life you know for them the sport is their passion yeah they are you know each team member each engineer you know each driver definitely is putting in a lot of hard work it's not for the lack of hard work, hard work that they are not performing well yeah. uh it's it's just that they are not you know have that package that's competitive uh and obviously funding has been a problem for them for a long time i think uh in fact i guess uh mazepin has mentioned this uh, that he doesn't have access to a proper sim uh mm-hmm. because Haas doesn't have one but Mick does because he is a Ferrari driver so he mm-hmm. does get access to the Ferrari sim which is like you know top of the line yeah. so it's it's quite unfortunate that Haas is in a position where you know there's pretty much no hope i would say kind of mm-hmm. for the team there are no future prospects uh to the team it must be very difficult to go into work for i think each team member uh in in there i guess I feel more so for the 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 pit garage members. It's like they're 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 putting almost as much hard work as as someone at Mercedes is, and just yeah. to see that even if they 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 get a P eighteen, I think they're going to be over the moon. Mm-hmm. It's it sounds like they're going to be over the moon, but it's not a good feeling to live by. <laughs> um, and yeah. then your point on Mazepin. I mean, we've we've given our our fair. deal of shit to mazepin mm-hmm. for entertainment purposes um mm-hmm. but yeah that guy's been taking quite a brunt and it's, it's kind of yeah him. yeah it, it does seem kind of evident at least like uh you know what i, I don't know if you uh, like if everyone saw the interview after the uh qualification before the sprint where mazepin was very close to tears i mean i it, oh is it yeah i uh it felt like a, a very different side of him that i have not seen before and uh, you know i definitely feel that yes he has had his share of shitty things no doubt about it right uh but at the same time i guess uh i feel that the amount of uh bias that we form about a person because of uh, certain incidents kind of does blind you a bit and in that sense we forget that that person is also a person and you know things like these do affect them uh i'm pretty sure he gets bullied a lot on the internet <laughs> and uh yeah uh, there's this I whole thing about him, him being little... kicked out of the mexican night club too right but i <laughs> exactly. think he wasn't there's was just yeah, some no, too wasn't. much uh, stuff that happened at the club but he did eventually yep. get kicked out Yeah, I know he actually didn't get kicked out. It was just that his friends were waiting outside, and he was just explaining to the bodyguards that uh, they are his friends, and like you know, they He's are kind of on the yeah, list. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And obviously, internet wants to sensationalize everything, and you know, uh, they kind of people started posting that he got kicked out and <laughs> things like that. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, you were mentioning he's also done some good, right? Like, let's let's yep. send some positive thoughts this way. He's He mm-hmm. he helped raise some funds or something, right? I'm, I'm yep, not yep. too sure. On I think he was. was running a fundraiser uh, where he basically uh, for cerebral palsy, uh, uh, basically raising money for I think research for that. Uh, and uh, basically, the deal was that uh, fans would donate to the fund, and he would. Uh, he initially said that he would match it. but later on in fact he doubled it so oh, wow. you know good on him uh no matter what like people do say that you know this is just uh whitewashing just you know trying to uh you know put himself in the good light and everything but you know 
Uh, while fine. why exactly if if you're doing good while doing that i'm okay with that you know? exactly even uh, if it's for pr purposes you're exactly. you helping someone yep. so yep. sure yep. do it for pr purposes yep exactly so kudos to him i guess uh, let's not today we promise we'll not make fun of you mazapin tomorrow will be another day though <laughs> yeah we'll we'll be back to our original selves tomorrow so yeah no promises on, on tomorrow for sure <laughs> <laughs> um but uh yeah kudos for him to yesterday finally finishing uh p17 in front yeah. of his teammate uh yep. make so so there's something good coming out for his race too yep <laughs> um there's there's an interesting drivers championship fight forming for p5 uh lando sitting at 151 leclerc at 148 mm-hmm. and then sainz at 139.5 with three more races to go and the way lando is dropping signs picking up um, yeah there's there's going to be this interesting fight for p5 yeah that's that's super interesting i didn't notice this like uh, you're right like lando didn't score much points recently so mm-hmm. 140 139.5 signs yeah that's yeah he's close as well man like yep. it's anybody's game uh, yeah honestly ferrari are seem faster than uh, mclaren at least so i guess advantage signs and leclerc uh, for you know going ahead of lando but let's see uh, might as well you know uh, yeah let's see what happens i don't yeah. think we can make any guesses at this point yeah yeah it's anybody's game it's it, what's sure is like at least 1 2 3 4 both uh, mark and uh, 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 yeah red bull drivers are sitting comfortable at 1 2 3 4 the one and two is is going to be till the end but uh, <laughs> the end four is probably locked up uh, mm-hmm. so it's going to be an interesting battle to see what's happening at p1 and then the p5 uh, fight yeah yep 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 amazing race though you know uh, i love brazil brazil has delivered a good race every time yes, uh, yes. and the track is awesome you know the crowd is awesome again uh, i think all the races in the americas are awesome i would say yeah uh, so yeah yeah pretty pretty back to the last three yeah. <laughs> in the gulf countries yeah should be fun last three races to go in this championship um for folks who have stayed all the way to the end of the episode uh we love you thank you for your constant <laughs> support um this this takes time energy and uh, money to put, to bring you lovely episodes race after race uh, interviews drive with the drivers and, and what's to come uh, race after race uh, so if you like what we are doing and want to support us hop on to our website fanfiction.com buy us a coffee there bottom right corner is where you where you're going to see it um and yeah if you just want to send some love to us ping us on our socials at the rate of fanfiction until the next episode these are your hosts signing off bye bye